Hello everyone and welcome to Spokes, the Urban Cycling Institute ridecast. And today I have with me Jason from Hi. Not Just Bikes. Hi, how you doing? How are you doing, Jason? <laughs> I'm doing all right. <laughs> so kind of you fun. have a YouTube channel that yes. is, uh, it's like almost neck and neck us at this point as, yeah. as this comes out. Um, but you have a much larger Twitter subscriber. What's the story behind your Twitter? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, my Twitter account actually started uh, when we were living in Toronto. Yeah. Uh, we're going to go straight through here. Okay. Um, as uh, just a, an account to rant about things that were wrong with the city. And so I built up a base there. And then when I moved here, I wanted to post positive stuff. <laughs> so instead of starting a new Twitter account, I just flipped over the old one to a yeah. new name, deleted all the old tweets, and uh, it actually worked pretty well. Yeah, had a bit of an audience there, and uh, and you, you've been, been all over the world, right? Yes. Yeah, it's, uh, and so I lived. I uh, grew up in Canada. Yeah. Um, but I lived in uh, the United States, uh, the UK, Taiwan, um, back to the UK, Brussels, back to Canada, and yeah. now in uh, in the Netherlands. But we're staying. That's it. We're wow. here for good. And that's uh, why we're here. And your full story is in your first episode. Yes, right? so my full story is in my first YouTube. <laughs> yeah, that one's actually really cool. You you filmed bits of the video yeah, in the, the different locations. Yeah, over the course of like uh, several months, I happened to be doing a trip back to Canada and even to London, Ontario yeah. um, for the summer. And then on the way home, uh, I found a really cheap flight to uh, London, England. And so I went wow. and visited some uh, the, there and some friends and stuff and then took the Eurostar back to uh, Amsterdam. So it worked out really well, but it let me film that video <laughs> in, oh. like, in like six different cities, yeah. which was really cool. Yeah. Nah. <laughs> so you are staying here. I am staying here. The family right. is staying here. We are not moving. We're done. Yeah. And that's when, why we're here. When did you first hear about Amsterdam and the Netherlands and about bikes? And yeah, you know, it's funny. Um, my, my wife and I were going through some old emails a few months ago, mm -hmm. uh, back from before we moved to the UK. So we knew we wanted to live somewhere else just because like, for the experience to live yeah. in another country. Um, we ended up going to the UK because it was easiest to find a job there. And uh, my grandmother was Scottish, so I could get a, a visa actually. But uh, I found some old emails about places that we were thinking of uh, living and, and working. And, uh, and actually right there was Amsterdam and Rotterdam. Yeah. And I had never been there before. So I'm like, I didn't realize I knew it back then, but apparently 20 years ago, I was already <laughs> looking at it. Okay. But as it turns out, I ended up uh, going to the UK and I didn't come to the Netherlands that much until we moved to Belgium. I'd been a couple of times yeah. um, for business, but uh, anyway, yeah. It's uh, it's been good, but we, when we lived in Belgium, we came up here all the time because it's nicer than Belgium. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're not editing that one out. So. <laughs> yeah. um, and I mean, do you generally stay within Amsterdam, or do you get a chance to travel around the Netherlands? Because some of your videos are set in other places, yeah, right? Yeah. So um, my. Um, my kids and I try to travel like, uh, well, there's a whole bunch of holidays here, like yeah. the summer vacancy and those course, but also the Harris vacancy. And so sometimes we'll take a train, like we went to Copenhagen for the Harris vacancy, but other times we're gonna turn right here. Okay. Um, so this is where they've got like, this is all newly paved because oh, they're doing yes. this and new they, development they got the here. Cool speed bump things. Here. Yeah. It's actually really nice here. Okay. Um, awesome. Ooh. And this is uh, the, the Amsterdam Convention Center. Yeah, area, this is right? the Convention Center. So they're, they're putting in a new uh, uh, hotel here. Yeah. And, uh, and all of this has been, I come through here a lot actually, but uh, all of this has been ripped up yeah. lately. But wow. Okay, and obviously they're still, the doing a, obviously. they're still doing a bunch of construction, <laughs> as you can see. But this this has been a bit of a mess over the last few months, but it's coming together finally and it looks great. Yeah. Um, and of course, the new red asphalt, and there's more new red asphalt up ahead. So this is the way to ride. Wow. And on our left is the highway that goes up yes, south of the city. Yes, indeed. Um, and uh, we, are we are, just to get your bearings, we are heading towards uh, Amsterdam South, which is the, yeah, the business south. district yeah. of the city, right? Yeah, so I did that in my Autoloo uh, video okay. yeah. um, uh, because it's amazing. That was one of those things that, you know, I was, I was saying to you earlier that, um, you know, despite the fact that I had uh, 
watched you know, Bicycle Dutch and uh, View from the Cycle Path yeah. and read that for years. There were still things that surprised me when I came here. And like, I think Zaudas was one of those things because here's like, a really modern financial district that looks a lot like, you know, somewhere in like Toronto or something, yeah. right? Like yeah, downtown yeah. Toronto. Like Toronto. And it's completely York, pedestrianized. Yeah. Yeah. It's got beautiful bicycle parking and a major train station. And you and this is where Amsterdam's bankers are, right? Like this is not <laughs> this is not like a bunch of poor students right. that are coming in here. These are people who are making honestly serious cash, right? Some of the wealthiest people in the city. And they're riding their Oma feats in to, to work, right? Or they're or they're taking the train and and they're uh, you know going for lunch, business lunches in this pedestrianized area. And I think like, geez, this is the way every financial district should yeah, be. Yeah, why not? Like, it's crazy. So that was one of those things. I was just like, damn, I had no idea this was a thing. Like, yeah. And that's where, you know, I got some of the inspiration for the YouTube videos as well. It's things like that. Like, how can I have been reading all this stuff for so many years? and still miss this, still be surprised by this. Shouldn't there be no surprises mm -hmm. by now, right? But I think... So it's nothing like seeing it in person? I, the, I think so. Close in video though, right? Uh, yeah, if you can't in, come here, not, like, I this try, I, I don't think, yeah, you can't compare, <laughs> but you have to be there and see it, but the next best thing is, yeah. is video. So here we are, right? Yeah, and that's what we're trying to do. Um, right now we are, which park is this? This is Beatrix Park? Yeah, it's beautiful. Uh, this is actually really nice. So um, I shouldn't talk about it because tourists might come here. But uh, oh, yeah. this uh, this is nice. I take my kids here sometimes. This is not too far away. Oh, but you were asking earlier. Um, yeah. But if we go to other places in the Netherlands. So I do try to go out to the other cities because the train service is so good. If my kids have a, uh, you know, a few days off mm -hmm. school, we'll head somewhere in the Netherlands. So we went to Groningen and Nijmegen and yeah. stuff. But, also, my youngest son is a, is a speed cuber uh, to what solve Rubik's oh, cubes as quickly Rubik's as cubes. possible. Wow. Yeah, so he's How six, but he's super into it. Uh, Minutes? I, his, I don't, I have no idea. His time is typically yeah. in the sort of, you know, 30 second uh, range. For a six year old. Yeah. Cool. Turn left here, actually, okay. sorry. Um, so what's really funny is that we go to cubing competitions and those are always in some random town in uh, the Netherlands. Like the last one was in Veenendaal Vest. Mm -hmm. Like why on earth would you ever go to Veenendaal West? And what's funny is that uh, my wife mentioned to one of her coworkers, like, I was born in Veenendaal. What the hell were well, you doing there? West? Why would hey, you go there? Great mountain biking in Veenendaal <laughs> West, actually, yeah. <laughs> nice. So, um, yeah, anyway, Veenendaal West is really nice. And that yeah. was, again, I was like, wow, how can like some suburb that everyone says is a crappy suburb be not crappy? Yeah. Like it's actually pretty nice here. Uh, it's right. around the Utrecht area, if you can yeah. look it up on the map. Um, yeah, we had to switch trains at Utrecht and took a sprinter. Oh, yeah. Amazing. And, anyway. Uh, so so you, you live in the, the South Amsterdam part. Yeah, like um, all the other expats. Yeah, with all the other... <laughs> well, we're not expats, we're immigrants. <laughs> immigrants. Um, <laughs> what, what's your favorite part of the city? That's a good question. Yeah. You know, the, the, what, what I do find interesting about Amsterdam is that uh, is how different it is from uh -huh. area to area. Like there's obviously the city center uh, of Binnestad where all the tourists are. Yeah. And that has those, you know, 16th century, 17th century canals and all that kind of thing. And that's really cool. And I love going there sometimes. Um, but then as soon as you like cross major canals, the city becomes totally different. And, and I find that really interesting because it's certainly like if you come in from the center yeah. and then you go outside of the ring. Let's go right, right here. Left. Okay. Right and left. Um, then you'll find that uh, left here. that the city changes so much. And so I, I think I really like that, that you yeah. can just get so many different things depending on what you're in the mood for. Oh, these uh, lights uh, light up as we yeah, bike by. These. Wait, they, oh, they only work in the other here, Only on this oh, side, on this right? side, on the right if side. If we go back, yeah. do you want to circle around and do the <laughs> other side? Get some good video? Yeah. Uh, um, so, I mean, I don't know what my, my favorite area is, but um, we're in uh, Apollo Burt, which we're renting okay. right now. Um, but we're actually looking to buy a house in Revierenburg, where, where we were just early, where we started cycling from. I actually really like it over there because I find like it's, um, it's residential. Uh, it's good for a place to raise families, but it's also got a whole bunch of really interesting shops and restaurants mm -hmm. and cafes and all sorts of other things. I think in a way that's kind of what um, what Canadian cities, North American cities, a lot of cities are missing. Like they don't even have that kind of option as right. a thing. You've got either you live in these like suburbs with fully detached homes and it's boring as hell, separated like by zoning from everything else, 
or you live in a really busy downtown area in a box of a condo in a giant tower and there's right. nothing in between right and so i think that that kind of missing middle it's really desirable honestly like i find that's a much nicer way to live because you can live in an urban way but without having to live up in a, in a condo building and you know there's still parks around and things uh -huh. like that and but still all of the amenities that you could need like we're going to have literally everything we could want within five minutes walking yeah. distance do you have any thoughts on the oh, here we are at stravinsky land Ooh, here and yeah. uh bike parking it's nice uh, bike overcrowded parking. right now because yeah, the other are under construction so this is all new they just opened this the okay. other day uh it was like this before but now it's wow. beautiful new red asphalt yeah and this i believe is the tunnel that they're working on what? um that's going to connect through uh on our left side here yeah on right? the left side yeah. here so so right now the station does not have a ride through no tunnel. and you have to yeah uh, you and have so to get off your bike and go through the station there was this uh youtube video that went around a few weeks ago yeah. as i was saying that uh where they rebuilt this whole thing in three days and there's a time lapse of it yeah. where they remove the rails they remove the road and everything and <laughs> that was just around here so i think that's going to be a cut through which will be nice okay makes it easier to get around the south station this is amazing how wide is it? this is like five meters yeah lots of isn't room. it great yeah lots I of room. hey over there <laughs> <laughs> i mean this is this is it. it yeah i just i just put a tweet up about this when i saw it was open i'm like does it get any better than this uh, i mean no this is uh, i mean as far as cycling goes uh do, do you do you think this is this kind of experience is is what we're after for cycling or I mean, is it possibly excessive like what a what a difference this makes right yeah. like here we are on a bicycle road you're t you, it's not this situation where you're um where you know you're having to worry about cars or you're talking about protected bicycle lanes or not i mean like we're going under the road right now this is uh i might need to take a call give me a second oh no that's fine <laughs> just reminding me that i do have to pick up my kids at some point oh okay gotcha yeah, it's still um, Cold enough for gloves out here. Turn uh, left here. Turn left. This here. is also a nice little Ooh, bicycle path here. Right. Yeah, it's uh, medium-sized Dutch cities. So, so you've been around. You've seen yeah, a few. Yeah, have seen some of them. Uh, yeah. I'm talking about like Nijmegen, Groningen, yeah. uh, Haarlem, these types of places. Yeah. Uh, would, would you consider them? <laughs> you know, it's funny because um, if you had asked me like 10 years ago if yeah. I would live anywhere but a big city, I'd say that you're out of your freaking mind, right? Like because we had lived in London and in Taipei and I spent a lot of time yeah. in Hong Kong where my parents lived there and uh, you know it was all about big cities but now only here would I consider like yeah maybe right like how weird is that? Just hop on the train. I grew up in London Ontario yeah. you know typical car infested shithole and I always assumed that <laughs> yeah, there that... might be audience from London watching right hi now. I'll <laughs> see you next time I'm there boys um, but uh, I mean they know it too but what they'll tell yeah. you is it's a great place to raise family which I don't think it is but um, but I always assumed that these you know these smaller towns were just inevitably going to be boring right. inevitably going to have all of these problems that they have you know but it's not true. It's only that way if you have like a car dependent suburb, right? Yeah. Like, and that, that makes the difference. And I think when I realized that, then I'm like, oh, what the hell? Why didn't somebody tell me that this was an option, right? And 200,000 people are plenty to support a vibrant they, town They center, really can. Right? And, and yeah. I think I said, as I said in my very first video, it's like Harlem was the place that changed that yeah. opinion for me. Cause I was like, whoa, whoa, wait a second, wait a second. You can actually have interesting stuff in a place with, you know, 150,000 people. Yeah. Like what, what the hell is this? Um, yeah, so, so I think that's what's really surprised me because like, again, we have lived all over the world. Yeah. We've lived everywhere and we've seen it done differently in other places. And I think I, I'm really glad we did it because otherwise I would still have this assumption that it's like, yeah, you know, well, you know, if you, you don't want to live in a condo. Once you have kids, then you need to get a car and you need to move out to the suburbs yeah. and all of these, these assumptions that are made in North America but it's assumptions completely out of ignorance. There are other options available, although not in North America. Like those options, just as I said, just really aren't there. You're just, they're never, uh, it's never a possibility. And the, in a place like Amsterdam, you could live, we'd say we're in an area like this, we're, we're in the outer edge of the city. Yeah, uh, and, and, this and I is spend where, most of my time out in, uh, right. out in the outer edges, yeah. And the housing isn't crazy out here. Right. It's um, crazy, but it's not as crazy. It's not as crazy as like having to achieve the same level of amenities in the neighborhood in a place like 
let's let's go with Toronto because yeah. we both know the city. It, achieving the same level of access to things, uh, and we're only what six kilometers away from the city center. Like being that close, I know it's going to cost you a lot in, in uh, any North American. Uh, absolutely, city. it will. But I think the when you look at the cost of urban areas in. Um, in North America, the, the, pr the prices are going off the charts, yeah. as you know. I think that's showing that people want to live like that. They want these amenities. And that's why the, the prices are going up as they are, because the, uh, let's actually go okay, cool. straight here. Or this is the only major road that we need to cross okay. along this path, which is um, interesting. So I, I found the maps of Amsterdam, the, the, the plus net and the whole net and all that kind of thing where they clearly separate the car traffic from the bike traffic. So we were just on, obviously, bicycle streets. And you're, refi you're referring to the Amsterdam bicycle plan. Yeah, but, yeah, he, but they, also have, yeah. They, they also have car plans as well, too, yeah. right? Like This is designated as a place where all the cars are going to go. Uh -huh. um, whereas for, the rest of, for all the rest of our journey, we're just not intersecting those yeah. kind of roads. And so it's, it's remarkable the difference that it makes because I mean, for the first part of our journey, we there were no, no cars around lights. at all. No, yeah. of course not. There were no traffic lights. We were un we had underpasses for every major road. Yeah. And it was fantastic, right? Like, that is a totally different way of thinking about how to get somewhere. If we were driving from where we were, we would have taken a totally different route and hit a bunch of traffic. But uh. it's interesting that the route is completely different depending on whether you're on a bicycle or, uh, or a car. And that's intentional, of course, as yeah, you know. This unraveling of, uh, of yeah. routes. And of course, I've read about that before, but actually experiencing it and seeing it like with my own eyes and using it every day, it's night and day. It's and the just, wayfinding. They, I know. They, they lead you naturally uh, I, away from the yeah, main. And, and, when you, and you, when you pull up a route in your route planner, then uh, it's going to show you something like that. Sorry. Yeah. Oh, man. Olympic Hotel. Okay. Wow, we're really getting out there. Yeah, I'm taking you kind of out in the middle of nowhere, but <laughs> I have a purpose. Yes, right. <laughs> I'm curious. We're going to ride around here anyway. Um, yeah, so these are rides that I do fairly often if I'm taking my kids to activities or something yeah. like that, like my son plays tennis up here. Um, well, we're going to turn right. Okay, this is an old rail line? Yeah, tram this line? is actually still in use with the historic oh, tram line. Oh, wow, this is cool. Uh, and if you go hey. down the opposite direction, you get down to head Amsterdam to Bos. Okay. But this, uh, this is nice here too. So this is again, like one of these routes that obviously this is only for bicycles yeah. or if you're walking. Um, but this is one of these paths that they've clearly, clearly put in for people traveling by bike so that this is, you know, this is the way you're supposed to take. This would be like the equivalent of a North American multi-use trail. Yeah, like a multi-use trail, yeah. Like. yeah. But, but it's connected to the overall network. So yeah. that's, uh, and, and they send you down this way. What's amazing I find is sometimes when you take Google Maps directions in Amsterdam, uh -huh. Google Maps is still very American. And so <laughs> they'll say understand. like, oh, there's a major road with a bicycle lane yeah. on it, go there, you know, which is exactly <laughs> the wrong way to go. Whereas if you get the Fietserbond uh, app, yeah. The Dutch one, it's a little clunky to use, but it'll clearly tell you, like, no, you should be here, obviously. Okay. And, and this is where everybody is. And that, that's not where some of the improvements could also uh, come from, because uh, it's, it's not always about travel time, and, and it's, it's not always about the distance. Right. You could have something that's longer, something that'll take you, uh, take you more time. And yeah, still well, the interesting thing is it's never going to take you more time because, we, as you saw, we have no stoplights, right? right. If, if we were along the car path, then we're going to have to hit the same stoplights that the cars hit. Yeah. But along here, I mean, no, right? We're yeah. not hitting any stoplights at all, except that one when we had to right. cross the Plus Net Auto, which is the, uh, the major through fare for cars. We're going to turn uh, right here. Yeah. I should throw, I'll throw a link up to that document because you're talking about. A yeah, it's a stuff. it's a map actually. And yeah. It's really interesting. Um, they've got it for for bikes, for trams, for cars, and it's basically you can see. Um, and I plan to make a video about this that uh -huh. you can see the map of Amsterdam then overlaid. What are the major car routes? What are the major bike routes? What are the major tram routes? Where those modes get priority. Right. Um, and I suppose if we're on this subject, since I have to go up this direction anyway. I'm going to take you up to a roundabout okay. up here, which is um, which kind of shows us in practice where a plus net bike crosses a plus net car, mm -hmm. and what they do. Um, 
to, for priority for those modes of travel when, when their major routes cross. Yeah. Uh, in the past, this, this uh, roundabout used to be all priority for cars, and now they're making it some priority for bicycles, although it's gotten very confusing because now you've got some exits on a roundabout that are priority for cars and some that are mm -hmm. priority for uh, bicycles. Uh, but it's kind of interesting to see what they've done about that. Okay. Um, and there's a continuous sidewalk. So, you know, Ooh. let's get excited about yeah. sidewalks. <laughs> let's put a link to that <laughs> one too. <laughs> anyway, so, yeah. Uh, yeah, so this is here is a new development you can see here, mm -hmm. um, built over the last 20, 30 years. This is a stadion uh, bird. Yeah, I'm really enjoying this. Down I... here is the old, um, this is the old stadium from the Olympics from, I think it was 1920 yeah. or something like that. And this was the originally the athletes' houses, but they built them in such a way that they could be turned into residences afterwards. Amazing. Uh, it's interesting to come out to these parts of Amsterdam because like no tourist would ever come here, but this is where people actually live. Right. And they're actually quite nice places to live too. Still got the microphone? Still got it. <laughs> Open stone place. So we're gonna go uh, through and turn left here. Okay. Uh, they're doing a whole bunch of construction down here. It's been a giant mess. I think it still is a mess up at the roundabout, but um, like this feed spot here to the left of us is brand new. Um, it used to be that this was a painted line bicycle lane um, yeah. going up in both directions, but they've totally redesigned the street Separate here. Yeah. Um, and as I said, changed the priority of the roundabout, which is Kind of interesting if you're interested in such things hey, as in like you were here um when the the snore feet span yes so the yeah, scooter yeah. went away how oh. it made a big difference yeah oh yeah okay. like i mean there used to be snore feet and all over here yeah. um for sure and now you know i mean occasionally you see somebody on the um in the bicycle lane but it's it's pretty rare honestly i think it worked it really did and it it's nicer Cause this is actually the eerie right because i know because you Usually Normally you would have a room coming up here. Here we go. Yeah. So right up here, we're gonna turn uh, left. Okay. Yeah, it, it made a difference. It definitely did. At first, you know, it nothing seemed to change, and everyone was quite skeptical. But yeah. Now, uh, yeah, absolutely. People make their own uh, their own paths. Yeah, as you do. And as you can see, it's still under construction yeah. here, and the hoarding is up. Um, and it's a bit of a mess. They're redoing the tram tracks. What street is this again? Amstelveen Okay. And this is also part of the Plusnet Auto, so this is yeah. a major road for designated major road for cars. I'm just enjoying this because it's, <laughs> Good. it's rather cool. I haven't been here. Yeah, I mean, why would you ever come here, right? Yeah. Like, but this is where I spend huge amounts of time. So I think we're just going to be a little bit silly and just go around this roundabout, even okay. though it's a construction nightmare. <laughs> but pay attention to the priority of the roundabout okay. as they're changing it. I'm remembering that it used to be entirely priority for cars. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure whether this is an improvement or not. Like, I mean, it's nice to say that it's nice to have priority to bicycles, but sometimes when there's a ton of cars around, yeah. it's, it's nice to know that they're just gonna go through, you wait for your gap and, and you go. So anyway, that's for other people than me to decide. But so here you'll see that uh, They've got this continuous sidewalk here, which didn't right. used to be. This is all new. Whoa, look at the you color. See here, it's bright red, okay. This used to be, a, you know, a, a uh, painted bicycle lane and then priority for, for cars. And then they made the bend. But they made this continuous sidewalk here. Yeah. And this is what it all used to look like. Uh -huh. Now here. And they got the tram tracks. You got tram tracks. Yeah. And actually the cars are supposed to yield for us. Yeah. Now to the left here. 
and now you get wheeled cars because we're tra we're pa pa passing this, a designated this crossway street. is giant. Yeah, and it's a bit this of a mess. This thing is giant. And I'll tell you, I ride this in rush hour a lot because yeah. uh, if it would just queue my up. son has uh, some activities and a friend that lives over here, and this is a mess in rush hour. Yeah. So this now we need to yield again here. Oh. And then around this way. So when you use this during rush hour, you could queue like seven across it's and all mess. make it in one. But the thing is, the reality of the situation, now look here, now we have priority, right? Right. Uh. It's confusing because it's you've got one yeah. roundabout and like, at least they put the, the bump up there with the continuous sidewalk. Uh -huh. Normally we would turn here, but it's all under construction, so we'll take right, a detour. So this is another big giant. But here you can see the it's priorities of Amsterdam changing from something that's priority only for cars yeah. to allowing priority for bicycles because we're uh, on a major route for bicycles there um, along that other side. But in reality, it ends up becoming a bit of a, a bit of a mess, to be honest. Um, I'm not sure. I'm, I'm, I'm honestly not sure what the right thing to do is, but it's interesting to see. We actually have to get to that okay. detour, and I think Let's, we missed uh, our turn. The the problem with it, like you were saying in rush hour, yeah, you could potentially wait for a very long time. But the reality is that of it is that um, a lot of the times drivers will let you go. Yeah. But then that causes its own set of problems. Yeah. So sometimes drivers will uh, will stop and let a bunch of bikes go through, but then that blocks up the roundabout and it it becomes just a giant mess. Yeah. But okay. uh, and this is some of the realities of where these modes meet. Especially trams. Yes. Trams are hard. Trams are uh, hard. Let's uh, let's turn here. Deal with. Yeah. And you can see here some of the older streets in this neighborhood. Like these neighborhoods were built in the 1930s mm -hmm. and um, mostly for cars. Like there was no bicycle infrastructure built when right. this stuff was built, so. And then these two strips has got put in. Yes. Probably these islands right here in the middle, they, they weren't there at some point. Yeah, when you look at the, uh, the, the historical photos mm -hmm. of this area, it was all giant wide roads. Yeah. And this is all clearly retrofitted. Um, and as they, as they uh, redo the roads, they'll make them up to the latest standard, but that takes a while, even in Amsterdam, right? So it's been decades. I guess this Turn means here. that at some point, um, at some point, Amsterdam was definitely a patchwork as well. Oh yeah, for sure. Right? You rewind. No doubt about it. I don't know at, at what point, uh, you know, it, 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 the patchwork feeling was the worst, but they would have had to do the street by street. Yeah, for sure. Right? Absolutely. And these painted bike lanes that are all around here really shows that it's just like, I don't know, uh -huh. there's bikes now. Let's, uh, yeah. let's put a painted line. <laughs> um, and uh, the reason it doesn't feel like a patchwork today is because the patchwork's been done. Right, exactly. Right? Yeah. I mean, it still exists in some of these areas here that we might not normally use, mm -hmm. but uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's definitely it used to be a patchwork. It didn't used to be this way. There's no doubt about it, right? Yeah. So maybe that's promising for some other cities. Just maybe everyone has to do it one step at a time, right? Yeah. I, look, I mean, my when we lived in Toronto, my wife was um, on the board of directors of Cycle yeah. Toronto, and she did a lot of work. I mean, she's an advocate. I mm -hmm. can't do that. Like I, I've said to you before, I just have no patience for it because I get mad at, mad at people. But, <laughs> um, but she was talking about how um, we can improve things, and I think they will. Yeah. But we, we realize that, and, and, and look, and for us, it's in not just bikes, lifetime, like, like know. I know, in yeah. whose lifetime, like, yeah. I, I don't really care that much about bicycles myself, to be honest, like, I'm not really a cyclist, like, if I, if it wasn't safe to ride a bike, I wouldn't, um, I ride a bike here only because it's super convenient, and you'd right. be stupid not to, um, but I realized that in Toronto, like, it, it was going to get better, but it would have been good for our kids when they were having kids. Uh, and we're like, look, we've got young kids. Like, yeah. I don't want them to get hit by a car at a crosswalk, which my son almost did, right? I almost got, I actually did get hit by a car at a crosswalk. Yeah. And, you know, within my first year of moving back to Toronto, and I was like, I don't, I don't, I don't want to deal with this crap, right? Like, right. that's all there is to it. So, yeah, I mean, you could stay and you could fight. 
And I think people who do that are very admirable. But I think the problem with me is that I don't really have a home. I've lived in so many different places. My parents moved out to Hong Kong and then back again. And it's like, I, I don't have a city that I can say, well, this is my home and I'm going to fight to make it better. And so to a certain extent, we just said, look, I just want to move somewhere better. Like yeah. I, I, I don't have the desire to fight for this stuff. I have better things to do with my time like make silly YouTube videos or something, <laughs> but <laughs> it's a silly place to make silly YouTube videos. I, I mean, this is, this is a rather quirky, silly country. Uh, yeah. So, <laughs> so here we are on Apollo Lan. Yeah. In Apollo Bert. And this, uh, has a pedestrian, I'd say a promenade. Yeah. It's huge. There. So this is one of these, uh, 1930s boulevards that used to be four lanes of car traffic plus parking. Right. Uh, it's not anymore. And now the the single most expensive housing in Amsterdam is on uh, just on this road on the other side. So there's these little streets that turn off. Yeah. And there's these stunningly beautiful like mansion style homes right right along here with that go down to the canal and it's this is the most expensive uh, real estate in the uh, wow in the whole city. Apollo Lawn. Apollo Lawn, yeah. Apollo and this is the old uh, Hilton uh, hotel up here. This. 1930s monstrosity. Anyway, I think we're just about okay. finished our uh, tour here. All right. Hey, thank thank you very much. Um, go go visit Jason on his YouTube channel over at Not Just Bikes. Yeah, just go to notjustbikes.com and it'll bounce you there. Yeah, it'll bounce you to the YouTube. Uh, you got huge Twitter following, so <laughs> why don't you go and check that out as well. Sure. And uh, if you have nothing better uh, to do with your time. Yeah, it's been uh, really nice having you. Yeah, man. nice to have you too, man. All right, take care. <laughs>